Well, good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris back again, and um, what I'm doing today is I'm um, tonight, rather for me, is I'm going to do a quick follow-up video, and this is a follow-up video uh, to the uh, predictive value calculations exercise uh, video that I did a little earlier on, uh, where I used uh, two by two tables and uh, Bayer's theorem uh, to calculate positive predictive. Uh, value and negative predictive values and I kind of wanted to do something a bit more streamlined maybe a bit easier to to look at and to understand and I, I think that this the video that I'm doing now is, is going to be much better format uh, much better sound uh, and just overall a much better quality so I want to go ahead and shoot this uh, and, and make something with a little better quality and actually something that uh, will be I think uh, much more helpful so let's go ahead and start. Okay, so uh, predictive value calculations using two by two tables, and this will be a little interactive exercise that I'm going to do. Okay, so this is the problem that we're confronted with. Um, we're testing a population slash sample. Uh, so maybe this is a sample of a population or a, a complete or total population. It doesn't really matter for, for this particular exercise, but uh, we're testing um, for the presence of disease X. You can call that whatever disease you arbitrarily want. We'll just say it's disease X. We know that this disease has a prevalence of 0.25 or 25% and prevalence uh, from here on out uh, will be abbreviated with PREV. Um, the test that we're using has a sensitivity E. E will be the symbol for sensitivity from here on out of 0.8. So it has a sensitivity of 80%. The test has a specificity, or P, will be the symbol for specificity of 0.7 or 70%. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the positive predictive value, or PPV, uh, for the symbol for positive predictive value. And we want to calculate the negative predictive value, or NPV, um, of this particular test, given that we know that it has a prevalence of 25% a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 70%. Um, we can choose any number of people that we'll call in as our population or as our sample, and I'm simply going to arbitrarily choose 1,000. It doesn't really matter a whole lot since we already know the underlying prevalence, sensitivity, and specificity. Um, we could, in theory, uh, choose 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, what have you. Let's just go ahead and choose a thousand. That'll be our, our number. Um, I do prefer um, uh, to use uh, uh, orders of magnitude uh, base 10, you know, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Uh, obviously, this makes the calculating a little bit easier. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our uh, two by two. Okay, so I have a square here. And I'm going to divide this square into four smaller squares. So at the very top there, I have uh, diagnosed, uh, that is, or a disease rather, that is um, on the left there, that is people with the disease, and on the right, that is people without the disease. And then I have a positive and a negative. The positive is a positive test result, and a negative is a negative test result. Um, I should note, if you look down at the bottom, the prevalence of this disease is going to be the box A plus C. Okay, so uh, that will be our prevalence. Uh, that's going to be important to remember, so just kind of note that. All right, so if we look at this box, we can calculate the positive predictive value by looking at just A and B in our 2 by 2 uh, setup here, 2 by 2 table. And the positive predictive value, and just try to try to write this down and remember this, positive predictive value in this case is going to be the value for whatever the value A is divided by A plus B. Likewise, we can calculate the negative predictive value, and that is going to be D divided by C plus D. Okay, again, that's important to know because we'll be using these formulas in just a little bit. Um, likewise, we can calculate the sensitivity, um, E, which is just A divided by A plus C. So it's just A divided by the prevalence. And then along with that, we can calculate the, uh, we have the 
the, the uh, specificity, P, and that's simply D divided by B plus D. So you can see how setting up a uh, two by two, uh, a, uh, a two by two can be um, a two by two table can be helpful in memorizing these formulas a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through with what we know. Okay, let's look at A and C first. Okay, so we know that E, our uh, sensitivity, is A divided by A plus C, right? Well, let's start putting some numbers in, start doing some crunching and figuring things out. Um, we know that prevalence is also A plus C, right? And think back, we're using 1,000 people, and our prevalence is 0.25 or 25%. Uh, so what that means is that A plus C needs to equal 25% of N. In this case, n is 1,000, 25% of 1,000 is 250, so a plus c needs to equal 250. So now what I'm going to do is I, I know um, what e is. e is 0 0.8, 80% sensitivity. So why not just plug that in, 0 0.8, and make that equal to a divided by 250, because a plus c is 250, right? So now to find A, uh, just simple algebraic properties, I can multiply 250 by 0 0.8, and that'll give me 200. I now know that A equals 200, and if A plus C equals 250, then by default, I'm going to know that C will equal um, 50. So if A equals 200, then C equals 50, and I have found um, half of the values that I need in my 2 by 2 table. Okay, so now we have those two guys there. Put uh, 200 in for A and 50 in for C. Let's go ahead and now look at B and D. Okay, so here's our specificity. And if you remember, specificity is just B divided by uh, D, rather, divided by B plus D. Um, so this is, uh, of course, the total number of people that don't have the disease. You can see the no disease there. So B plus D has to equal the number of people that don't have the disease, um, which is, of course, going to be simply 1,000 subtract the prevalence. Well, we already know the prevalence is 250, so uh, we subtract 250 from 1,000, and that should give us 750 people left over that do not have the disease. They're non-infected. Okay, so total uh, number of non-infected people is B plus D, and we already know that that has to equal 750 because the prevalence is 250. So now we can go ahead and plug in some numbers like we did earlier. Uh, we know that the specificity is 70% or 0 0.7. Let's make that equal to D divided by 750 plus, because B plus D is 750. Uh, so to figure this out, again, we simply need to multiply our specificity or is of 0 0.7 by 750. That gives us 525. That's what D is. And by default, we should know what B is. It's just what I need left over to get to 750, or in this case, 225. So we now know that D is 525. And by default, B needs to equal 225. So we now have we can now plug all those guys in. And we have all the information we need to calculate positive and negative predictive value. So let's go ahead and look at positive predicted value. That's going to be A divided by, there you go, A plus B. Uh, 200 uh, divided by 200 plus 225. And negative predictive value. Just plug in the numbers. 525, that's D, divided by C plus D, or 50 plus 525. So that gives us a positive predictive value of 200 divided by 425. That's 200 plus 225 is 425. And that gives us 0 0.471, or 47.1% positive predictive value for this particular test. And let's just do the same thing for negative predictive value. Again, just plug in the numbers. 525 divided by 50 plus 525, which is 575. And that gives us 
0.913 or 91.3%. And we now have our, our final answers, positive predictive value of 47.1% and a negative predictive value of 91.3%. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and uh, a bit easier to look at than the first video. As always, thanks for hanging in there.